When it comes to projects that the military is working on, unfortunately, we don't get to know much top secret and all of that. Fortunately, they're eventually forced to come clean and tell us what they've wasted money on and roughly how much they've wasted. Tonight, we take a look at some military boondoggles so ridiculous they beggar belief. Strap in. We're in for some chop on Deep Fat Fried. Man, I'm nervous about this one. <laughs> this Man, is going to piss me off, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, these are just fucking crazy, bro. And I mean, there's tons of these, by the way. I just kind of picked a few out of that. I hat. can't, I cannot, when I hear about wasteful military spending, I always just think about like all the things that could have been done with that money. Oh, yeah. It's really hard not to. This will definitely be one of those types of episodes for people like you. Like, man, okay. they, they could have functionally ended homelessness like three times with that money, huh? <laughs> I know. That's the shit that really depresses me. I don't get touched by those little, like, personal stories. Like, this person suffered this tragedy. It's Dude, like, I, yeah, brought yeah, you, okay. I brought you to tears with a story about a, a black woman that gave her life to the fucking uh, labor movement. Remember but, that? You know, I, I was really more moved by just, like, the fact that these things had been, like, so hidden from me. In right. my education growing up and stuff and just like the fact that these stories were never put forth to me. Um, so I kind of felt that. Well, here's some. And also some just like stuff. the epicness of the scope of the fucking accomplishments of some people definitely sure. can be moving. Well, here's some other stuff you probably didn't learn in school. Now, this here is a typical Arlay Burke class destroyer. You probably see these in all the movies. You've seen these a million times. Um, this is makes up the bulk of the destroyer force of the United States. Uh, there's 68 in service, and there are 89 planned to be put into service, like a total of 89. It'll okay. be brought up uh, to 89 soon. Now, this is an older uh, style of ship. It, it was uh, designed and first built in the 1970s and kind of improved upon in the 80s. So it's an older ship. Um, and of course, you know, we got to modernize the Navy, even though these ships work just fine and we still have the biggest Navy in the fucking world. We got to modernize the Navy. Well, of course, meet the DDG 1000 Zoom Vault. It's in this next yeah. picture here this is an actual picture of the boat, by the way. Um, this is the first bu- uh, vessel built under the U.S. Department of Defense's uh, DDX program. It was delivered to the U.S. Navy in May 2016. The ship was commissioned for service in October 2016. So this is the new uh, badass ship that you're going to be seeing everywhere. Just kidding. Um, The U.S. DOD renamed the DD-21 program to DDX in November 2001. The program is focused on a family of advanced technology surface combatants rather than a single ship. So we can look forward to more ships being replaced uh, by this program. You know what I smell right now, guys? Smell it, teacher? What is it? This is freedom, TJ. Uh, I thought you were going to say it smells like, a, smells like a boondoggle. Um, <laughs> no, no, Paul. It smells does. like freedom. That's the smell that's in my nostrils. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what you're smelling, my friend. Uh, likely the most sophisticated warship in existence, the Zumwalt class destroyer is also one of the most expensive. A stealth guided missile destroyer intended to replace current U.S. destroyers, many of which are three decades or more old. The DDX program that birthed the Zumwalt was so plagued with cost overruns. Okay, so I want you to follow this. Initially, the program was approved to deliver 32 of these fucking things. But Uh the cost overruns and all the shit they had to add to it was so bad that they had to cut that number down to 10. And eventually, it got so bad that they had to cut that number down to fucking just three of these. So (laughs) they went from 32 to three. There are three of these in existence and each one of these motherfucking ships costs $3 billion. So naval officers don't want to use them because if you lose one of them, like literally like the GDP of a small country just went to the bottom of the ocean. You know what I mean? Oh my God. $3 billion for this hunk of shit. Look at it. It looks fucking absurd. Look how free we are with that ship right there though. Oh, my God. Look at those people stand up there free to do what they want. Three billion a pop, and we have three of them, and really, they're not used for much. And there's a reason, too, beyond just their ridiculous expensiveness that they're not used. It turns out, tactically, they're just not as useful as the ships they're replacing, and I'll explain to you why. Um, so tactical challenges lie uh, ahead for the Zoom Waltz. How uh, will commanders deploy it? Uh, the possibilities are few and unattractive. 
Zumwalt may become a high-value unit like a carrier or amphibious assault ship escorted into combat zones by a retinue of picket ships. The escorts can attempt to fend off attack while the DDG-1000 pummels land targets, uh, much as a carrier strike group uh, close within the air wing while striving to or, or close within reach of the air wing while striving to defend themselves. Or Zumwalt can await uh, the results of a battle before taking station within reach of her land attack cruise, cruise missiles and advanced precision gunnery. Or she can venture inshore alone, trusting to stealth to mask her presence. Um, problem is, none of these methods appeal. A concentric formation centered on a high-value unit is bound to attract attention. And with a ship that's built for stealth, why would you want to do that? Like, why would you want to send this thing out with a retinue of protective <laughs> ships? It's oh supposed to be God. it's supposed to be sneaky. So, what an embarrass! I mean, it's just so embarrassingly fucking stupid. So, they're supposed to build thirty two of these fucking things. They end up building fucking look, three, and they're worthless tactically. 1, they can't do anything. They're it too has, fucking expensive to risk for the purpose that you wanted to use them the for. The score on it right there, TJ. They score things in the Navy. The score is a one thousand on a yeah. scale from one to a trillion. One to a thousand. So, it's a worthless ship. So basically, it's, it's a three no, billion dollar actually, worthless you know piece of shit. You know what? You're talking a lot of nonsense, TJ. Uh, the other one of the other options we talked about, which is waiting till after the battle, means postponing the main event, namely projecting force ashore, which makes it kind of like a cleanup vessel. What an impressive expensive. fucking weapon! Oh, this three billion dollar weapon. We got to keep it out of harm's way until the battle is settled, though. It's like it's a warship. Yeah. It should be out there in the fight, but it's too expensive to risk, so it's fucking useless. And what it was really built for, relying entirely on stealth on a big ship's capacity to elude detection, is a hazardous business, obviously. Once Zumwalt starts firing guns and missiles, everyone's going to know where she is. Um, uh, They're uh, using what the seafarers ruefully call the Mark I Mod Zero Eyeball. So, like, as soon as this you fucking build, thing opens up, everybody in, in the area is going to know exactly where, because it doesn't have stealth guns or stealth missiles, you know what I mean? You build a stealth ship, stealth ships are designed to go it alone, right? Yeah. That's the whole reason you make something stealth. Yeah. But this ship is too expensive to go it alone, because it's fucking three billion goddamn dollars. Yeah. And it's, and, ship, and it's meant DJ. to pummel project power from the sea onto the shore during a battle, but it's too expensive to send in during the battle, so it waits to go in after. <laughs> well, it's going to be kept safe, guys. I mean, fuck, you know, look, let, let, them, let them have the battle, then the ship comes in, fires a few missiles or something, you know. A $3 look? billion dollar janitor is yeah. what this thing is. Um, it could go in well, and clean up the mess hey, afterwards. It's hard work and someone's got to do it. Oof. So, lest you uh, lose sight of the truth here, the military has way more ways than this ridiculous boondoggle here to waste money. And this next one, while maybe not as much money was wasted, I think it's more ridiculous still. Blow that up, TJ. All right. You want to know what you're looking at here? It's hard hard to tell because it's so camouflaged. You're yeah, looking at five billion dollars right there, TJ. That's what five billion dollars looks like, TJ. What? Seems like a bargain. Wait, what do you mean? How? So the uh, the what? army spent five billion to develop and produce a uniform featuring a camouflage pattern, and here it is with some very sad looking soldiers sporting oh my it. What's- God, look at this this guy especially, not this one. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. Um, the same guy. Maybe. I can't really tell. No, it's not. <laughs> it, makes it might as well maybe. be, though. Um, so this, they wanted to develop a camouflage pattern. Like they want to tell me they're sorry. Yeah. Guys, I want to say something. It really does I'm look sorry. like they're showing up to tell you that a loved one has died in war or something. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, they wanted a camouflage pattern that would work pretty much in any environment. And the result was called the ACU. Uh, you're looking at it here unveiled in 2004 and it was so unpopular and ineffective that soldiers in combat environments simply just refused to wear it <laughs> um you know what those soldiers just didn't like good fashion yeah uh it Unless was just a it. an absolute hunk of shit like it literally <laughs> 
$5 billion yep. for something no one likes and doesn't work. Love it. $5 billion for a suit of camouflage that actually made United States troops easier to see in almost <laughs> every environment. Um, the army eventually had to suck it up and buy uniforms from private contractors while sinking even more money into developing a, an even new pattern. Uh, new uniforms were finally approved in 2014, but guess what design they used? Go ahead and go to the next picture, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Looks familiar, doesn't it? This is a design the army had been using before uh, the, uh, they started considering the ACU. So they just kind of like... They backpedaled. Used a more, way more traditional camouflage pattern um, after spending more money trying to make this ACU pattern work and then just kind of <laughs> did this. <laughs> uh, a good use of billions of dollars if I've ever seen one. And if you really want to chuckle, TJ, take a look at this picture. Now, the UCP that we were talking about only... Uh, exists in these ridiculously standout pieces of legacy equipment that actually interfere directly with the usefulness of the much cheaper and much older design that's currently being used. So you can see the light colored UCP shit, the $5 yeah. billion dollar shit like uh, on a couple of these guys and see how it makes them stand out. You yeah. Know what I mean, like it stands out. Yeah. So that that's really the only way that you'll see this being used um, in the military right now is like. I oh, want to say that the uh, price of in, uh, the price of uh, solving homelessness is twenty billion dollars. So this is a uh, one fourth of that budget used to develop camouflage that doesn't work that <laughs> soldiers wouldn't wear because it made them stick out like sore thumbs. So you know what, TJ, you may say that, but uh, look at these people here. Uh huh. Look at this, this old camouflage. They just don't look as good. The other camouflage TJ just had a, a, a brighter and crisper quality to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly sure what you want from camouflage. Exactly Kristen. what you want as a soldier to stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. How about pink and yellow sequins. Maybe that, that would be can, a new, that's something that could be, be a looked new into. camouflage. We should look into that for another 20 I, trillion bucks. I hope so. So let's watch a little video to take us back in time. This is a very famous speech, by the way. It's a little ah, excerpt. Yes, Evil Empire. Yes, let me make sure the volume is going to be good for that. Oh, uh, yeah, you might Boom, there we it. go. Let us be aware that while they preach the supremacy of the state, declare its omnipotence over individual man, and predict its eventual domination of all peoples on the earth, they are the focus of evil in the modern world. It was C.S. Lewis... What's going on? Why? Why? What? This? This? This man is president. Why? Why is he able to get through a sentence? Um, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's really it's, it was a weird time back in the day. They used to put people that could actually speak in the presidency. It's crazy. I'm shocked by that. It's weird because like I haven't seen that in a long time. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, true. Who in his unforgettable screw tape letters <clears throat> wrote. Still a fucking the moron, evil by the way. It's not done now in those sordid dens of crime that Dickens loved to paint. It is not even done in concentration camps and labor camps. In those, we see its final <laughs> result. But it is conceived and ordered, moved, seconded, carried, and... He does deliver everything like a game show host, though. I mean, at least it's consistent, though. And he doesn't right. he doesn't fumble, stumble. You know what I mean? If he does, he, knows he how picks to read. it up. He knows how to read. Yeah. He knows how to present it in a way that you sounds like... Trump trying to read this shit? Oh, my oh God. My they would never give God. Trump a speech like this, dude. Dude, Trump would or never Joe have been Biden, able to get through it. He'd be, like fucking, he'd be bumbling and fumbling. Uh, and, uh, 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 no. Uh, uh, the great uh, they didn't uh, even do that in a concentration great, camp, Jack. Uh, great author uh, Lewis... Uh, Car Karl Marx. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> There's no way these guys are fucking. Trump be like as Charles Dickinson once said. <laughs> said and uh, by the way, United, terrific author. In clear, carpeted, warmed, and well lighted offices by quiet men with white collars and cut fingernails, and smooth shaven cheeks. Can you imagine? Ah, oh, just never. That would be a landmine field for oh either for either of our last two presidents. Yep. Obama, and I guess, could have done it. Shaven Obama could have done it if he had some prep time, which I'm sure Ronnie had with this too. I'm sure, not, sure, sure, sure. But uh, the, these last two, though, the, that no, whole line even, there, done. That you're not quoting and, any Dickens. You're not quoting Bush any couldn't Dickens. have done it. Bush couldn't have done it either. Or Bush was it C.S. Lewis? Bullshit. He's quoting C.S. Lewis. You know C.S. Lewis quotes. 
Um, so anyway, we don't have to watch this whole thing. Um, I guess we watch a little more, though. It is kind of interesting. We do not to need to raise their voice. Well, because these quiet men do not raise their voices, because they sometimes speak in soothing tones of brotherhood and peace, because like other dictators before them, they're always making their final territorial demand, some would have us accept them at their word and accommodate ourselves to their aggressive impulses. But if history teaches anything, it teaches that simple-minded appeasement or wishful thinking about our adversaries is folly. It means the betrayal of our past, the squandering of our freedom. Okay, so, so uh, I- if you <laughs> if you don't um, recognize who he might be saber rattling against here, it's another favorite of the modern times, Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, so, announced just a few weeks after this very famous speech in which he refers to Russia as the evil empire. If we kept going, he would do that. But you can go find that for yourself. I urge you. Okay. Um, the Strategic Defensive Initiative uh, was meant to be a space-based system of lasers and satellites that would shoot down any Russian inter- intercontinental or submarine-launched nuclear missile heading towards the United States. Fuck yeah, dude. Star Wars, yep. a missile defense shield. It was it was uh, kind of referred to internally and then kind of jokingly as Star Wars. Um, so that's what it was meant to do. What it became was a black hole of theoretical research, pop culture ridicule, political tension, and... Now lots of, of money spent money. Oh my god. Lots so and much lots money. and lots of spent money. Um so a staggering amount of money was wasted on this. As here here's a little you know, kind of an irreverent way of uh presenting it. So you can see like in pop culture this the this boondoggle became like a big political issue because it was just like shit was being promised and slowly but surely like astrophysicists and scientists and physicists and you know all this shit started coming out of the woodworks and going like what you're saying that you're building up there or working on building doesn't even doesn't even work theoretically (laughs) doesn't work it's a nightmare and then more and more money was being appropriated into it like i said it was a black hole that just sucked up money um staggering amount of money was wasted in this uh, estimates on the cost of SDI research and development start at $100 billion, run as high as $150 billion. Um, adjusted for inflation, that's two, uh, $289 billion and change. For nothing. Uh, for it, nothing. It literally, uh, well, I mean, I guess you could give it this. Okay. Um, and here's, by the give way, it some. one of their uh, little things explaining how this was going to work. <laughs> um, how it works. It should just be a big fucking block here that says it doesn't. It doesn't. (laughs) Um, Some of that money was spent on like basic science research. And so I guess it wasn't a total waste. But um, so some of the research might have actually been might have been good in and of itself, but not for this. Not for this. This never materialized at all in any functional way. And that's two hundred and eighty nine billion down the toilet. How, Could have how, solved homelessness several times over with yeah, that. Just with a lot that of alone, things. just with this yeah. boondoggle alone, you could have solved homelessness several times over, given health care to everybody in the United States, and probably ended world hunger, I would imagine. Um, Instead, we got an imaginary defense system. We sure did. <laughs> we. But you know what, guys? We projected strength against the evil Soviet Union. So did I think we? We all- Didn't we just project incompetence against them? Uh, uh, yeah, that's a good question, TJ, and I think that's a question uh, better put to another time. Okay, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall, man. We owned a member. Who won the Cold War, TJ? Yeah, I, I, I guess we did. Uh, okay, who they, won uh, the so Cold strategy. War? Who? 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 Who, who, who won, won the Cold, Cold War? War? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. All right. So. <laughs> This, you, you guys recognize this? You probably don't because they don't use them. This is the Boeing Sikorsky Comanche. Okay. Pretty badass looking kind of fucking RoboCop-esque futuristic. Yeah, it does kind of look like an 80s version of the future. It's yeah. like an OCP police helicopter from Neo yeah, Detroit, from, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, during the early 1980s, the U.S. Army started to formulate requirements for the replacements of its helicopters then in service, which resulted in the launch of the Light Helicopter Experimental Program, or LHX. Uh, nearly a decade later, the Army announced the selection of Boeing uh, Sikorsky's team. Uh, 
their design won the contest basically and shortly after a contract for construction of prototypes was awarded um so here it is in flight here pretty mean looking machine man that's pretty cool at least yeah, yeah it does um the comanche was to incorporate several advanced elements such as stealth technology and other <laughs> dude i found in researching this that anything that has stealth in the name is typically <laughs> a boom a boondoggle yeah um, just don't give money to it yep uh, not stealth. everything, but yeah, my guess. <laughs> most things well, that are called stealth end up being a stealth bomber. I mean, that's the stealth one bomber that's is probably, good. Yeah, that one's yeah, that, that one's probably at least earned its keep. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. Uh, so operationally, it was to employ advanced sensors in a reconnaissance role, where it was intended to designate targets for the AH-64 Apache. I think I pulled a picture of one of those. Uh, you've definitely seen an Apache before. Yes. Uh, the meanest and uh, baddest ass helicopter in the world. Um, definitely still to this day. Um, you know, I think it was built in the late 70s, early 80s. And still to this day, there's nothing that competes this with like it. It's like a death machine, dude. Yeah. Um, and, the you know, this other helicopter that we're looking at, the Comanche was supposed to be like a little stealth craft that went in before these guys came in and designated targets and then these guys would come in and light them up that sounds good in theory right sounds like yeah sounds good in uh, in theory um it was also armed with uh, one rotary cannon of its own and it could carry missiles and rockets in internal bays and optionally on stub wings um for light attack duty so it had some firepower too it wasn't just a sneaky chopper gave it enough firepower to defend itself at least yeah um, the Comanche was developed as a one chopper fits all replacement for the Huey, Cobra and Kiowa helicopters. The army had been using for decades meant to be stealthy, fast and able to execute a number of different mis- missions. Instead, it was bulky and risky and a boondoggle that literally had trouble getting itself off the ground. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> What do we need this helicopter to do? Fly. Can it do it? Um, sometimes. sometimes, depending on the wind and weather. Uh, two prototypes of this were eventually built, and the program was canceled in 2004 uh, after $7 billion disappeared down the drain. <clears throat> it just sounds like uh, par for the course with uh, <laughs> it's like these busy civil defense and these defense industry contractors. They, someone cooks up a project. They sink billions of dollars into it. Everyone gets a bunch of makes a bunch of money, gets rich, and it's like you know what? It just didn't work out. Oh, yeah. so I can't it's even Boeing. take it up. Boeing and Sikorsky, both big giant fucking aeronaut or aerospace companies, they both fucking got, got a fuck ton of money to make this thing. Seven billion dollars, you know what I mean? And they just ba- they basically produced two prototypes that barely flew. It was a piece of shit. So another seven billion dollars down the toily but hey guys let's end on a positive note just kidding let's end on a hilariously bad note yeah finally unless you think that wasting money on ridiculous boondoggle projects is an inherently modern uh exercise let me dissuade you of that this is the m247 sergeant york divad uh that's short Mm. for division air defense it was a self-propelled uh, anti-aircraft gun, or a SPAG, SPAG, Spag. Uh, developed by Ford Aerospace in the late 70s. Based on the M48 Patton tank, it replaced the Patton's turret with one new one uh, that featured twin radar-directed 40-millimeter rapid-fire guns. Uh, vehicle was named after Sergeant Alvin York, a famous World War One hero. This is an anti-aircraft tank. Okay. Um, the Sergeant York was intended to fight alongside its brother, the M1 Abrams and the M2 Bradley uh, fighting vehicles in the U.S. Army in a role similar to the Soviet ZSU-23-4 in German Japart. I, I, I pulled a, a picture. This is actually this is the Soviet GSU, and it actually works. It's still in use. It's a functionally useful anti-aircraft weapon, um, and it was developed to be the answer to this. Um the M27 was meant to deploy two huge 40 millimeter uh, cannons on this radar controlled turret. Um, but as you can see, <laughs> um, uh, how's it going to do that? It looks yeah. like, how did it, it looks like it looks like it'd be very difficult to move that quick. Like the Soviet one looks like it could like shift quicker. Uh, well, it looks like it'd be cumbersome. There's a lot of problems with this. So the procurement process was plagued with arguments over what design to go with and what cannons to use. Once a design was chosen, it had severe problems with its radar. 
including the inability to discern enemy helicopters from trees, um, which is a pretty big one. You know, if you're trying to shoot down helicopters that are coming in uh, to save money, uh, off the shelf parts were used, including World War Two era Bofors guns. So those guns that are on the front of this are literally like shit from World War Two because uh, they had to cut corners on this thing. Um, but design and construction pressed on despite all these problems. And when uh, the tank was finally unveiled, the fire control radar mistook a reviewing stand for a target, sending observers <laughs> scrambling oh for God. cover. <laughs> the observing Dude, stand was targeted. I mean, yep. if, uh, like, this is the definition of a fucking moon dog. Like, yep. let's show off its capabilities. It target l- acquired. <laughs> it literally. Yeah, well, it literally pulled an Ed 209, dude. Yeah. It literally tried to kill the people that were there to obs- un- observe its unveiling. Um, they scrambled for cover lest they be shot to pieces. The M247 was finally canceled after only 50 were made and most were bombed as targets. So they ended up using them for bombing targets for bomber training Good. and shit. All told... The U.S. spent just over six billion on four different experimental uh, spag systems, none of which worked in the slightest. Adjusted for inflation, that's a staggering forty-two billion dollars. It forty-two down the billion for bomb practice, basically. Mm-hmm. Down the shithole to develop a literally worthless anti-aircraft tank that was just parked out in the desert so that bombers could use it for target practice. Is that a plane or a tree or an observing stand? I can't tell. Fire! No, I'm glad that Paul pulled this last one, too, because this is, oh, my God. This is something I've been hearing about for fucking over well, 15 years. Yeah, well, there is one knew, more if you want. There's probably enough room, time to do it. <coughs> oh, yeah, for sure. We're doing one more. Uh, so uh, I, I, of course, pulled this one. This next one, because I knew that people would give me no end of shit if I didn't. This is the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is the biggest fucking boondoggle of them you all. Remember, I remember reading some shit back in like 2007. It's like the F-35 is going to be awesome and amazing. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Then just like every year since then, it's like, oh, cost overruns. Oh, yeah. This this part doesn't work. Oh, the the firing system doesn't work. It's just there's so many fucking problems. It's so the money has been spread around a number of usual suspects, defense contractors. Lockheed Martin is the prime FD, uh, 35 contractor with principal partners Northrop Grumman and BAE Systems. The aircraft has three main variants, the conventional takeoff and landing variant, the F-35A, which is a short takeoff and vertical landing vehicle. And the F-35B, which is a carrier-based vehicle to be launched off of aircraft carriers. Um, its development is principally um, funded by the United States with additional funding from uh, program partner countries. So this is a boondoggle that doesn't just involve the United States. A international. Lot. International boondoggle. NATO countries have all uh, given money to this. Although, once again, you, the United States has shouldered most of the cost for this fucking useless piece of garbage. Of um, this futuristic looking but absolutely non-functional shitty piece of fucking ass wipe garbage that you see in front of you. Um, so some of the countries that have gotten scammed into this are the UK, Australia, Canada, Italy, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, and formerly Turkey. Several other countries have, have ordered these or are considering ordering the aircraft. Why? I would have no fucking idea. Uh, the program has drawn so much scrutiny and criticism for its unprecedented size, complexity, ballooning cost, and much delayed deliveries uh, with numerous tactical flaws still to this day as of the making of this being corrected. Um, I looked into it, and this thing is grounded right now as they fix an aerodynamics issue or some shit. So it's just like constantly being test flown and like, nope, doesn't work. We need another billion. Nope, doesn't work. We need another billion. <laughs> oh, Go shit, ahead. Fucking guns don't fire. We're going to need a billion for that trigger mechanism. Oh, oh. France, you're going to have to cough up $250 million. The canopy doesn't work. Oh, shit. Like, what kind of incompetently designed piece of shit is this? And how did it come out of the same company that, like, provided the F 16 hornet and shit like some of the best air superiority jet fighters ever conceived of and then they crap this out like how um probably because they had to actually have no ingenuity they had to make it work like this shit it's like so clear that's just like it's an atm it's an atm yeah because cost overruns don't cost these companies money they make them money 
So they're actually incentivized to make a piece of shit over a functional aircraft because right. they could make more money. They can make more money milking this fucking process. Yep. If there was an actual war. Exactly no one would tolerate this. Like if we were like if World War Three was imminent, we would have these F thirty fives be out there like lickety split fucking and working. They'd work too. Yeah. Yeah. Because there wouldn't there wouldn't be no tolerance for this goddamn garbage. But because everyone's just making money. So you know? every time this thing goes up and doesn't perform to standard, there's an expensive redesign and retrofit p- process that these companies fucking scalp more money for. Um, the Joint Strike Fighter program was meant to produce a fighter that the Air Force, Marines, and Navy could all use. Fast, stealthy, uh, a plane that could take off from anywhere, land on anything, and deploy almost any weapon. Instead, became a black hole of technical problems, delay, uh, technology that was obsolete before it was deployed, and above all, money. It's been estimated that the F-35 has cost a staggering $1.5 trillion, with a T, since its inception in 1996. Meanwhile, the plane is still, to this day, plagued by issues, including having trouble landing on aircraft carriers, <sighs> issues winning in uh, theoretical do- or like practice dogfights, reliability problems, and ironically, vulnerability to lightning strikes, despite the name of lightning being their designation. <laughs> oh, fucking God, dude. This thing can't do shit. $1.5 trillion. You talk about ending... Most of the problems of poverty, hunger, and sickness in the world, that amount would do it right there. You could redesign the American education system, give every man, woman, and child in America fucking functional health care, and end homelessness with that amount of money right there. And it's all been shot out into this, this. jet that literally gets out dog fought by the jet it's trying to replace. Are you kidding me? It loses dogfights against the fucking 1970s jets that it's replacing? <laughs> because it, cause you know why? Because on paper, it sounds like an amazing thing. It sounds like, wow, it can do this, and it can do this, and go anywhere, deploy any weapon. But it's like, it's obviously way too ambitious of a, pro- a project, number one. Number two, we just talked about there's an incentive. There, there's a total incentive to make sure it never functions right. You have a bunch of countries and their defense programs just fucking pumping money into this program, yep. and they're already committed to it. So what are they going to do? Oh, we're going to bail out of it. Oh, what's the replacement then? Sunk, sunk replace cost it with something. Policy has got them by yeah. the balls now. One point five trillion, most of it shouldered by the U.S. By the way, so yeah. Congratulations Wonderful. to us. We're uh, a bunch of money wasting, uh, you know, warlike apes. Congratulations that... to Lockheed fucking Martin. Yeah, good job. Yeah. You guys good made job, trillions. Lockheed Martin. Trillions made. Good job, guys. You guys have done it. And that's You've what I got. Made a lot for of you. money. You like these boondoggles? Let me know. I got uh, quite a few more for you down the road. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's your old pal Mickey here with a direct order. I mean an option that you are strongly encouraged to take advantage of. You will click the link below. You will subscribe to the Pessimist Productions Patreon. I mean, (laughs) if you want to wink, wink, there's more content there than, well, you could swing a dead toddler at exclusive shows, exclusive streams, hours of exclusive content. Why aren't you clicking? Why aren't you subscribing to the Pessimist Productions Patreon? <laughs> You're making Mickey sad. Yeah,